Hi. <sighs> My makeup last time was tragic. Thank God it was nothing important, just like beauty, you know, just like like when you see something in retrospective and you look see it bigger and you're like oh my god i look like a clown but well today's topic not everyone is made to be a boss babe so yeah let's get into the video now the thing is i have been in many positions, in many places, and I have worked on my own, I have worked for people, all kinds of jobs. And if something I have noticed is that not everyone is made to lead, not even themselves. And it's not just a diss to my former employees, employers or anything, it's just like, not everyone is really made for that. And, uh, the number one red flag of such individuals is that they cannot recognize the fact that they're not made to lead and they try to overcompensate all the time by being overly demanding and bossy and annoying and they start leaking all over the place all kinds of symptoms of the fact that they know deep down that they're not made for the position they are at not everyone is made to lead, and that's an unfortunate truth that nobody tells to the boss babes. And this is the boss babe culture commits a huge crime on. Everyone is made to be number one! No. No. No, you're not. You're incredibly misguided if you believe that. No, that's not the truth. The best leaders and the best bosses I have met were the ones who knew who have a little bit of humbleness and they were like I would love to hire you for this position in this department you already have way in there but if the people who are specialized in this field in this specific task believe that you're not good enough for that then I cannot hire you even though I'm the owner of the factory the factory the whole thing I have to respect the people who know about the topic I I like I was like Please hire me, you're an amazing boss. Please, God, Jesus makes me suffer. <laughs> Every boss. Is. So I have met people who were indeed good leaders. And you could tell in the way of commanding that they were even humble at times. Now there's a difference between humble and insecure. And some people tend to overcompensate insecurities with bossiness as if being more confident and strong and tougher will actually make you good for the job and it's not the truth unfortunately <laughs> if anything i have seen so many business start from the ground and collapse the ground small businesses big you name it as soon as they have a bit bad leader i can tell from the get-go that they're doomed for their business practices. So, this whole idea that everyone is made to lead and to be the star and to yada yada yada, you know all that good jazz that people are promoting since a long time ago, it's not only delusional, it's going to lead you to failure. The amount of people I have seen wasted wasting time, resources and energy in things that they're not going to prosper because you're a terrible boss, you're a terrible leader and it's not just it's not just about treating badly your employees it's about how you manage money if you spend everything and you don't take counts, you don't control your numbers you just spend and make things look pretty and you don't actually think on the practical aspect of it you don't do the logging, the, you know, the records properly you're going to lose money, and the more you lose, the more time you spend doing that. No matter how much of a kind employer you are, you're going to lose money. But everyone is just like, always be aware of the employer that says, Oh, yeah, I don't have any records because I just spend the money that comes in, and that's it. And that's, I get it, if you're just the only one, even if you're just the only 
employee in the place, like your boss used to be working on its own, that's already a red flag anyways. Like just because you're working on your own doesn't make it any less true that you should be handling in a sensible manner your finances. Every time I have worked for myself, I have handled my finances so well. I have managed to save more than once a humongous amount of money. One of them I lose the money because my country has this thing called devaluation and inflation and I was saving money, humongous amounts of money in pesos and then I thought well I should probably buy dollars you know to freeze the number or at least to prevent myself from devaluating my money and my mom said no don't do that she convinced me out of it and boy did I regret it but that's my fault because I didn't listen to myself I listened to others in that regard and uh, I learned from that lesson but there is people who wholeheartedly don't keep balance checked of their own finances and then they want to run a business and they just get lost they get utterly lost and they are like oh yeah it's not important and it takes you it takes them a while in, for me to convince them you need to run your business in a sensible manner and keep a record of everything comes in comes out at best sometimes i manage sometimes to convince them to put a record of what comes in because it has occurred to me that I work on commission sometimes, sometimes. So those times they were like, okay, I'm going to put a record because you, we work, we are working on commission. So you, I have to pay you according to what enters, but then I don't see them making any records and how much they spend. So that's another red flag. <laughs> a business is not just about how much you earn, it's much how much it costs you to keep it running. So yeah, you can pretty much tell in the first month of someone running a business, they're not going to succeed and it has nothing to do how much money they make, how, how well positioned they have, how much money that they have as a, as a beginning, as a, as a first as the first batch of money, as you know, as an initial investment, those things won't be of any value if you're not responsible with your task. The perfect example of that would be the pink sauce girl that happened, that is happening currently. Mind you, this is being recorded in August 22. So, yeah. Unfortunately, no matter how much money you spend, how much you invest, how much of a good attitude you have towards your employees. How much of a good attitude you have towards your employees. If you don't have a good attitude towards business, like balance checking and all of those stuff, all of that good jazz, you're not going to make it and you're going to fail. And I have seen people failing catastrophically for not keeping their numbers properly. Another reason why I've seen people failing catastrophically, it's for stealing, petty stealing from their associates. And when I mean petty, it's around 10,000 pesos, you know, in today's currency that would be 300 bucks, I think, I guess. I will have to do the math. I'm going to put it right here. At the moment of editing in this video, that would be the currency exchange, but it's a really petty number to be scamming out of your associates. But if you're scamming that number, guess what? Your associate's going to leave. And more often than not, the associate was the one doing the job and the heavy lifting. And it's a really unhealthy dynamic. Another reason I have seen many a business fail to get disrespectful to respect no boundaries of the employee especially if they have a very versatile one that does a lot for the employee employer they become disrespectful and they're like oh we can replace you with anyone else and just like no you can't no you won't so i have left okay i was the versatile employee <laughs> so i have left that business in which they were being incredibly disrespectful and it wasn't because I have much of a choice, it's because I couldn't take any more disrespect. 
because it was impeding me with actual issues. Like one time when we have a severe restriction of COVID and we couldn't leave the house. And this employee of mine that had been working for a few months demanded me to leave the house, walk five kilometers all the way down to her uh, studio and work there teaching children against the law. And the thing is, if most people, if you got caught, especially outside of your day, because we had a day, got into our ID number to leave the house, you were caught outside of the house on the day that you were not authorized. The bail was massive, like 70,000 pesos, easily. No. And I said, no, I cannot. I cannot allow myself. Or they would take you to prison. They would take you to prison. I cannot allow myself in this moment to do that, ma'am. And she was like, it's okay. I can replace you with anyone else. Guess what? That place is no longer running. Because they couldn't. And with that attitude, even if you replace me for a little while, you're not going to get people who will last the test of time. So yeah, a good indicator of someone being a good, a good boss, it would be if you're a good employee. You can be a good employee. It could happen that you're a good employee, not a good boss. But more often than not, I have seen that people who can manage an entire place on their own, they can do it. They can collect the money, you know, save it in a sensible manner and open their own business and they can be a boss. But more often than not, that's not usually the case. So yeah, that was my little video of today. Not everyone is made to be a boss, but I hope you find it enjoyable and uh, interesting somehow. And uh, yeah, I, I better get ready. I might have to go to work right now. So yeah, until next time, how are you having a lovely week? weekend i don't know when i'm gonna post this probably in october <laughs> and uh yeah so till next time bye bye